Thanks so much for joining Siren Media in our grant info sessions. Coming up right now, we have the Play of Rights realm. Please hold. Hi, Alexis. Hi, Liz, how are you? I am well, how, are, how have you been? Are you good? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm as good as one can be <laughs> at this time in the, the world. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you guys have some exciting stuff coming up. Um, would you mind just really quickly introducing yourself and your role at the, at the Play Rights Realm? I cannot speak today. <laughs> no, absolutely. Uh, hi, my name is Alexis Williams. I am the Associate Artistic Director um, at the Play Rights Realm, uh, and we're a uh, New York based um, off-Broadway theater company with the focus on helping out um, early career and emerging playwrights. Amazing. And you guys currently have a program that is open for submissions right now. Uh, your writing fellowship and the Scratchpad series are currently open. Uh, do you mind talking a little bit about the mission and the history of both of those programs? Absolutely. So the Writing Fellowship, we are currently, in, it's currently in its 12th year. Um, and its focus as sort of with the, the whole mission of Playwrights Realm is to support early career playwrights. And what that looks like in the Writing Fellowship is we select four fellows and they spend nine months, they spend, you know, a theatrical season with us developing a single play. So they apply with the play um, and then they focus on developing it, workshops, rewrites, script meetings, and the like um, from, you know, September through June. And then their work is presented um, at the end of their fellowship um, in our Inked Festival, which is sort of our way to help, help show the play and show them and launch them um, into the theater community. Um, and also through the year, they're getting things like professional development workshops and meetings with, you know, design consultants and dramaturgs and the like. So it really is intended as sort of a holistic approach to A, help them develop the play through the year, but also help them get some professional development skills and forge some connections and the like through the year as well. Um, I and that word holistic, it definitely seems that completely. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and with the Scratch Pad series, which is one of our newer programs, that's about four years old now. And that sort of came out of our desire to engage with writers that aren't just in New York City, that aren't just in like the, the New York area. Um, since, you know, with the fellowship, particularly in the before times, and hopefully when we get back to the, the post, you know, vaccine times, um, you know, there are a lot of meetings and stuff that are, that were happening, are happening, you know, in New York City. So for the fellowship, folks need to live in commuting distance of New York. But, you know, there are so many wonderful writers out there who might be writing great plays, but live in, you know, Louisville, Kentucky, or Austin, Texas, or, 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 you know, fill in the blank. So with Scratchpad, that program is essentially we select a small handful of writers and they each come in and get a 15 hour, like one week workshop in New York to develop a play that they wanna work on. They can choose to have a public reading at the end if they if they wanna do that. Um, yeah, and it's just our way to sort of help A, to, to A, be able to engage with those writers and B, be able to help introduce them to, you know, the, to be able to bring them to New York and introduce them to the New York sort of theater scene. Um, some of these, you know, programs are taking on a little bit of a different format in the pandemic year. Um, but yeah, that's what the intention has been. And this year, we're actually also opening things up to accept international playwrights for Scratchpad as well, which we always sort of wanted to do and hadn't done before. So that's a, a brand new thing. That's amazing. It's so good that you're allowing for that diversity in geography um, that needs representation and that they have stories to tell. Can you tell a little bit um, about the types of projects that you're looking for right now with both programs? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, with a fellowship, since the writers and us are going to be spending nine months with these plays, they should be pieces that really could benefit from nine months of intensive work and intensive development. Um, so, you know, it, it should be a, a full length play. So we always say, you know, no one act should be full length. 
Um, but it doesn't need to be the thing that folks are sending around hoping theaters are just gonna pick up and produce immediately because they aren't wanting to work on them more, you know? So really pieces that could benefit from that. Um, you know, are we, we always say we respond to like bold, exciting theatrical voices. I wouldn't say there's like a specific subject matter that tickles our fancy. I feel like, you know, we just wanna hear voices we haven't heard before and stories we haven't heard before. and you know, things playing with form in exciting ways and, you know, and all that jazz. So, yeah. That's amazing. Um, is there an ideal candidate perhaps that you're trying to look for and support? Uh, you did talk about, you know, people being in that emerging stage and it is, you're developing this project together. So I guess, how would you define that early stage or that early emerging uh, playwright stage? That is always the fun, hard question that is, since, you know, I feel like in our field, there are folks that end up being called emerging for, for ages and ages and ages. Um, but I mean, with, with Scratchpad in particular, we say, you know, they can't have been, I think with Scratchpad actually in fellowship, they can't have received, you know, a, a major production um, in New York is one of the things we look to for that. And Really, I mean, so much of it varies case by case. We, you know, if there's a writer who has been through a ton of development uh, opportunities, who's had a bunch of productions, who's been to the top grad schools, who, you know, fill in the blank, who it feels like is already kind of like well on their way to, mm -hmm. to making it in, in the field, that's probably not someone we're going to be able to, to help as much because they've already wonderfully like got that support. Um, but you know, if you've got somebody who's like a little newer, a, a little newer to the scene, or maybe they've been in the scene for a while, but they're still trying to kind of like break in, you know, those are those are the folks that we're really focusing on. And I would say with the fellowship years, you know, we often have kind of like everybody's in that early career range, but you have some of the folks where it's like, this is my first play, and others where like maybe it's not, but they haven't like really like broken yet. If, if that makes sense. Okay, so you want some experience, but it doesn't have to be, you know, you've been someone who's had a play on, on you know, off-Broadway premiere done really well in New York, wonderful. Okay. Yes. Um, got it. So many of our, as you know, many of our members are filmmakers, they're screenwriters, um, and there's a lot of overlap, uh, I think, between screenwriting and uh, writing for plays. So are they welcome to apply? Have you had participants in the past who have also written for film or TV? They are absolutely welcome to apply. And we, we have had some of those applicants in the past and have had, had some of those fellows in the past. Um, I mean, I feel like we've also had folks that are playwrights that have gone on to also then be working in film and television. Um, since you know everybody everybody needs to make money and you know we we know that theater is not the highest paying field um so yeah they're definitely welcome to apply you know we're not accepting screenplays or teleplays like it would need to be a play um and if there's something that kind of feels like a sitcom on stage that probably isn't something we would be interested in but if there are, are screenwriters or tv writers who do have experience or interest in the theater, who are striving to write like things for the theater and to be a part of that world, um, then yeah, absolutely. They are definitely welcome to apply. We'd love to read them. Awesome. So what's your ideal uh, type of project? Uh, what about, I know that you said that you're open to a diverse uh, uh, step of stories, but are there certain themes that maybe your uh, the program is interested in more than others? Yeah, I mean, I feel like we always just want a diversity of of stories. I, I I mean, I can't pinpoint like this is the subject matter. This is the the theme. You know, we've had years where the fellows plays have ranged from you know, a, a family dramedy about a, a Jamaican American family, like, you know, living in Brooklyn to a kind of farcical, sharp and funny biting take on like reality TV and dating shows and how that kind of 
can work <laughs> some reins or, you know, um, so we've definitely constantly had a variety of voices. I feel like we're just always striving to A, have a diverse group of fellows, a diverse group of scratch pad participants, um, really, you know, representative of the community we live in. Um, and also having things that, that feel like they need to be on stage, you know, that feel like they are plays and that feel like they are things that we haven't seen before. There are stories we haven't seen before. There are things that are playing with forms in interesting ways, just things that feel, feel new in that way. You've said that a few times, playing with forms. Can you kind of give some examples um, of ideas or where you've seen applicants do that in, in their applications? Yeah, I mean, you, and it's tricky because again, we've had fellows that have plays that, that exist in a very linear, you know, linear fashion. And that's great. There are also things that might play with time and space in interesting ways. That's great. There are things that might like approach language in different ways. Like that's, that's great, you know. Um, I think that it's 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 generally just looking looking for places that just feel feel new and voices just feel feel new. Hmm. Things that we aren't already seeing constantly on you know on the American stage. Yeah, and since it is open so broadly this year, especially including international applicants as well, can you talk a little bit about what the professional development is going to look like for these programs, for these applicants and, and those who eventually get in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I think it's probably best to talk about what it's been in the past and what it tends to, what hopefully will be in the future. Um, so with our fellowship, we have these things called wild cards, which pop up a few year times through the year. Um, and we started to do this with our with our scratch pad participants as well, which essentially is allowing our writers to sort of engage on a topic in like on the professional side of things that they might not have access to. Things that have been popular have been like meetings with literary managers and associated ease and folks that work at theaters to try to like learn more about what happens on that side of the process and to really also give the writers a chance to like get to know some of those folks that you know m might be able to engage with their work in the future but also just to allow them a chance to like hear about what that side of the process is um we've often had past wild cards on like writing for film and tv since that tends to be a thing that folks are interested in we've had ones on financial planning and consulting for like artists um, the way we choose these is really by just like sitting down and talking with our writers at the beginning of the year and saying like, what are the things that you want to engage with? What are the things that you want to learn? What are, you know, what are those topics? And looking at that and then trying to like build out what those wild cards are accordingly. You know, if there's a year where a bunch of people don't have agents and everybody's like, I want to hear more about like agenting and what they do and to get to meet people, you know, then we might do one on that. But it really, it varies year to year just based on, based on the group and based on the writers since so much of what we're doing is really trying to forge relationships with like writers. It really sort of comes down to like the writer almost as much as the play um, mm -hmm. at the, is sort of at the, at the core of it. Since, you know, we strive to have long lasting relationships with the folks that have come through our, our doors. Yeah, it sounds so bespoke and and tailored to those people and their needs as emerging uh, playwrights. And I think that that is wonderful that you're able to tailor it differently for each group because every group is different. Um, for the writing fellowship specifically, though, fellows also collaborate with a director, design consultants, and and other people. You're you're partnering them. Uh, can you speak to you know how this real world experience has developed a project as well as a playwright's career? How have you seen someone kind of grow with these connections? Absolutely. And actually, our scratchpad writers get a lot of that as well, since they're coming in for a, a week long workshop. So they, you know, get to engage with the director and actors and the like for that. Um, I feel like it's, it's very easy to feel like you're writing in a silo <laughs> and not to, to have access to others. And I feel like that's just been very useful. So the way the fellowship is set up is kind of early slash midway through the year they have an internal reading with, you know, their director and with actors to really give them a chance to like 
hear the play with other humans, to hear it, to be able to talk about it, to be able to like bring pages in and take pages out and like bring in changes for actors and just to really spend that week like digging in um, with collaborators in the room, which is a wonderful thing that one doesn't always get if you're just kind of, you know, trying to hear everything in your head and writing in a silo. Um, and, you know, that leads to like near the end of the process when they're able to, you know, having worked on rewrites and stuff in the interim, having had script meetings with their fellow fellows and, you know, getting dramaturgical support and feedback, you know, it leads to like at the end, another, another reading that can be open to the public, with, you know, where it's not just, hey, this is just internal, just like work, work out what you want to work out, let's try some things, but like they're able to bring all of the stuff they've sort of learned and used and gained from, you know, the previous year to the, the Ink Festival where, you know, again, you've got a director and actors to help then say, here's where this is in process. Come on in, like, let's, let's see some readings. Speaking of the Inked Festival, can you tell us a little bit about it and how, how the writing fellows are, are going about that process during the festival? And it, you, were, you were just starting to talk about it. Just can you flesh it out a little bit more for us? Absolutely. And, you know, we're in such a weird time. So <laughs> I can talk about like the before times of Inked and probably the future times of Inked. And we're, we're figuring out what the now times of Inked are. But, you know, it has... I mean, it's essentially a 29 hour workshop like reading where, you know, director and actors and playwright come together to, 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 do, to do a reading, to, to basically put up something that like audiences, industry can come to, be it in person or virtually, you know, this year is what it is. Um, but really giving folks a chance to, to see what the fellows have been up to, to see what the writers have been up to, to get a, a taste of their voice, to, to see a reading with, with actors to sort of help bring it to life just in, in reading fashion. Um, you know, they also have design consultants that are there to allow just like a taste of what a design could look like. You know, if it's, if it's a scenic designer, you know, consultant, maybe it's a sketch of what a set could, you know, but something, the things just to sort of help give a, a look into the process, a look into the voice, a look at the play, um, a taste of what could be something that would lead to a production. But yeah, it's really just intended to be able to say they've been with us for a year and here's, here's what they've been working on. And we've seen so many um, organizations already kind of change the way that they're doing it for this year. How are you guys shifting inked for this, this time? Yeah. Um, I mean, that we've got meetings up on that are happening still. So I don't know, hopefully I can answer that question, but I can answer um, how we've shifted like the fellowship and scratch and, um, and scratch pad so far. You know, generally there would be um, different like script meetings with the fellows and the internal workshops, which already happened. And in the before times, those would be in person, but those have all shifted over to existing on Zoom. Um, you know, our, our wild card professional development events have shifted over to Zoom. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a lot of basically things shifting to Zoom, um, which so far has worked out, you know, worked out fairly like quite well. Um, yeah, so it's just been a, a lot of Zoom. <laughs> Just video time, but it, it still allows for connection with people and it still allows the opportunity for people to continue so that, you know, this year artists still can apply, which is, which is great. And that's, you, you're still supporting artists. Can you tell me a little bit, um, was there anything outside of the fact that we're now in this virtual world that allowed you to invite international people for this year and any other changes that you made to the programming itself. You also said that you, you did always want to open it up to international applicants. So was that just a part of increasing diversity? Yeah, I mean, I think we've always wanted to, to broaden the writers that we're able to work with to increase diversity and, you know, and the fact that, I mean, for international scratch pad, like those next season, like will exist virtually, like those will be virtual processes. Um, and some of our other processes are likely going to exist virtually too. We're in this land of like, 
there is a there is a, a vaccine, but who knows what this rollout is. But you know, I know for international, it it will be um, existing um, virtually, and but we've always wanted to be able to just like broaden our reach of who we're engaging with. And I do think that coming out of a year where everything's had to shift over to virtual and looking towards next year where I'm guessing at least a lot of it will be, it seemed like a good opportunity to be able to do that um, in a way where we budgetarily can, <laughs> you know? Um, so it's kind of allowing us to like start to take those steps. Um, yeah, it's a good time to be able to do it. As someone who is international herself and, and currently international, I am excited that you are uh, expanding that as well. Can you just mention some of the success stories of the fellowship first, and then we'll switch to Scratchpad after, but I just love to hear about what applicants can look forward to if they become fellows. Uh, some of the stories that make you excited about the program and seeing people develop. Yeah. No, I mean, I think that you know, historically the Ink Festival has always been wonderful. I remember last year when almost all of them were just sold out and tons of humans and folks from theaters coming to engage and also the public. And there's just something really thrilling about, you know, being able to, to help launch someone. And when I, I mean, one of like the, the big success stories we always go to is, you know, one of our fellows, um, Danya Love from, he was a fellow a uh, few years ago, um, but play Sugar in Our Wounds was one of the realms, um, realms fellowship plays, was an inked. Manhattan Theater Club came and saw it, uh, saw the reading and ended up doing it in their season. So that was one of the things that was just really, really thrilling. Um, and just watching the future lives that, you know, plays that have come out of the fellowship or scratch pad, or even just writers that have come out of those programs. You know, there've been writers from, from both programs who have, you know, gone on to then nab commissions at like major theaters and get big, you know, awards. One of, one of our old fellows was just named the P73, you know, fellowship winner, which is thrilling. Um, so like those have just been wonderful. And, you know, Scratchpad is a, is a newer program. It's, you know, only about four years old, but I mean, I look at like the writers that have gone through that, who have gone on to have productions <laughs> all over the place, who've gone on to, you know, be, be working and getting into great programs and who also, you know, you've got folks that weren't New York based, but came, had a workshop, had a reading and now have connections with you know, some major New York theaters that they didn't know before or that didn't, you know, that they hadn't been engaging with before. So I feel like it's, yeah, it's been just kind of great to be able to help people along on their path. That is amazing. Do you have any other words, you know, for applicants, you know, or people who are wanting to know more about the fellowship or scratch pad, just any last thoughts that you'd like to share? No, absolutely. I think, I mean, our, go to our website, go to our website. Um, there's a lot of information. You can see our, you can see our past playwrights there. You can see more information on the program. You can, you can see how to apply. Um, the application is a very simple form. Um, applications are open until February 7th. Um, yeah. And we're really just excited to, to get to read some plays, get to know some new, new playwrights. I'm excited for folks to apply. Uh, this is the Playwrights Realm. Applications are open now. Feel free to check out their website and be sure to come back to Siren Media for more grant info videos. Thank you guys so much for listening. Have a good one. Thanks.